Good evening. Thank you for paying such close attention to the announcements. You may never hear them again, right? I appreciate you being here tonight. It is great to be gathered with you. And it's a little bit of a different evening because we've got something very sweet and very cold planned right after the service tonight. Uh, it's called ice cream. Anybody here like ice cream? We all scream for ice cream. Yay! <laughs> I know you probably took one look at me and knew that I liked ice cream, but I do confess I do like ice cream, and uh, we are looking forward to that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do our best. We've planned, and I said planned, to abbreviate our service and try to be dismissed from here at 745 so that we can go partake of those sweet blessings. However, we are open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do here tonight. But we're looking forward to that, and that is not just for us to eat ice cream. That is also a fundraiser for our youth who are trying to make their way to youth camp here in just a couple of weeks. Nonetheless, if you've looked around, you've probably noticed there's a few pastors missing, so let me just go ahead and tell you we are short-staffed tonight, so you get to see me here at the beginning, and I've also asked Pastor Jerry to do the speaking tonight. Uh, I'm still just a little bit fatigued from the last week's services. Um, it was a good time, and I do feel revived and refreshed in my soul, and I'm looking forward uh, to this coming Sunday. Uh, anybody remember the coming sermon series? Anybody remember that? Dog days. Uh, wow. I don't know, but that thing kind of caught on very quickly when I announced that Sunday afternoon. I think I've already got three dozen pictures of dogs that have been sent to me. And, and here's the deal. I'll make one more push on this. If you've got a cute puppy dog that you like, you just, you know, you're a dog lover, you're a dog person, you send me a picture of your dog and I'm going to try to work your dog into a slideshow, a video presentation of dogs. Now the big thing is you got to figure out how in the world is he going to preach about dog days. So you might want to pray about that. and Maybe the Lord will help me and grace me with something to say this Sunday. But we are looking forward to a great time this Sunday. Why don't we go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings tonight. Are you ready to give? All right. Praise God. Three of you have something to give tonight. <laughs> we can laugh a little, can't we? All right. Our offering scripture for tonight, Genesis 14, verses 19 and 20. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful that you have blessed us with incomes. Obviously, each and every one of us here tonight recognize that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. You've taken care of all of our needs. And so we thank you, Lord, that we have this blessed opportunity to participate in heaven's economy, to give of our tithes and of our offerings. And so tonight, we give with joyful hearts, asking that you would bless, Lord, each and every dollar that's put into the offering tonight for the furtherance of your kingdom, to meet the needs of your kingdom. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And everyone said... Thank you so very much. Well, as they're receiving your offering, let me ask you to open up your heart and get ready to receive the word of the Lord. Pastor Jerry is uh, ready. He's been priming the pump, and the Lord has a special word for us today from Pastor Jerry Fleming. Well, I don't know if you received it or not, but uh, Robbie went over to my wife and had a sheet of paper, and she said, it's gonna, you're going to raid him tonight, and and it goes from one to five, and one starts down here, and five goes up here. And I tell her, so what is it for right on the floor? She wouldn't answer me. But tonight is, uh, I want to speak to you about a couple of things. About us as Christians, and about our forefathers. Tomorrow we celebrate the 4th of July. The beginning of our nation is 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence. Out of those 56 men, several of them were very wealthy men. Excuse me, I got a glare on my glasses. I should have cleaned them. But out of those 56 men, several of them were very wealthy men. Very many of them were very educated men, had college degrees. They were some farmers. They were some migrant 
people that were of different sorts. Kind of like when Jesus picked his uh, disciples, I think. But the thing about these 56 men done something that changed the world of that time. These men had a dedication to a dream of a new nation. A nation to be set aside different from any other nation in the world. Be a free nation. It was a dream. They dedicated everything they had to it. The majority of them even gave their lives for it. The ones that didn't give their lives for it, even that had, that had plenty, when the war was over and we become a nation, lost, had lost everything. Everything they had, they were broke. Not only the men, but their families as well sacrificed everything they had. They gave everything they had to create a nation that they believed could be the greatest nation in the world, which came about. The thing is, what are we doing for our nation? Our nation is heaven. I'm just a visitor down here. I'm just passing through. But I want to have the same dedication in my life that those men had for the dream of a nation. They was dreaming of a nation. We don't have to dream of a nation. We've got it in, in black, white, and red right here of what this nation consists of. We can't even imagine. It tells us we can't even imagine how great it is. But still and all, we're compliant. We're laid back. We're asleep. I picked that phrase up during the revival, and I said, oh, that is so great. The church is asleep. I'm talking about myself. And here's something you can remember. It'll keep you from getting angry with a pastor or a preacher. When they point a the finger at you, they got three more pointing right back at their self. Because we preach to ourselves as much as we preach to anybody else. Probably more so. But we're asleep. We're not, we're not out doing the work we should be doing. We should be speaking to every man, woman, and child we come in contact with about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about eternal life with God Himself and Christ. With these men, it was our forefathers. They had a dream. Did you know that the majority of them, it, it didn't say, it doesn't say all of them, but it said the great majority of them were Christian men? They were Christian men. I believe to have dedication like that, you, you need to have some kind of a belief in God. Because they, they, they foresaw what this nation could be. They signed this declaration creating for all men to be free. We're in the freest nation. We, we can go and speak our mind now. We can speak openly and not have to worry about being shot or put in prison. But God is, God is there with us at all times. Is, uh, what, what are we doing about it, though? You know, are we taking it for granted? I'd like for you to would, you go to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. It's on the screen. Is, um I'm having to get used to these new glasses. 6 and 10 says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. It said do good to all men, but especially to one another. I, I know every one of us here has known of churches splitting all kind of ways. I know of churches splitting on the color of the carpet. I took... When I was passing the church, I painted the back, back wall black. Took two beautiful white crosses and set them in front of it. And put words of faith all over in white. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? The church was, a, was static about it, except for three people. They were about ready to quit the church on account of it. And I, and I explained to him, I said, why are you worried about this? It has nothing to do with our worship. It's trying to enhance the building that we call the church and make it better. But people get, oh, they get overreactive over things that doesn't mean anything. Well, I don't like the shirt you're wearing. You shouldn't have wore that tonight. What difference is it about? I see, I see people coming to church that get saved. 
and they're not dressed appropriately. Young ladies won't be dressed appropriately. And I saw this happen too. I saw a young lady come in. She had been working in a house of the old pew. And she got saved. But the only clothes she had was revealing. Not terribly, but revealing. First thing they did, though, one of, the, one of the mothers of the church went to her and told her she couldn't wear that kind of clothes and give her some of her old clothes. 60-year-old clothes to a 23-year-old young woman. Guess what? Young lady left the church. She had been there two months and she, she took off. Thank, thank the Lord she went to another church. Thank God for that. But what are we doing is... We need to be praying for, our, for one another and not looking at little things that make a difference. But then we get back out into the, into the open, out here in, in the world, and we have a nation that's falling apart. We're in the greatest nation in the world, folks, but I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But it's falling apart. And why? Because we are asleep and not doing our job. We are, al we are allowing peer pressure to hold us back is the news media was just put all this stuff up and we'll believe everything we hear on the news media excuse me but it's not always correct it's not always correct have you ever noticed that the news media publicizes bad things and you never hear anything good you never hear anything because it don't sell news. It don't sell newspapers. We need to get out and, and dig and find out what's going on. Try, try to find out what's good. Is when when there, I heard this during the revival that when, when bad we sound like they're saying bad is taking over. We got good ahead of that, more good than bad. But we don't hear about that. Do you hear about the the? People who, who are being raised from the dead overseas or people's eyes being, re, their eyesight being restored to them overseas, that's happening overseas. But is it publicized? No. And I know this for a fact because every, every one of you here, most, uh, most everyone know Holly. Liz's daughter. Holly and Lester was overseas and they saw that. They actually saw it happen. It happens here once in a while. But it's happening overseas regularly. The minister last week told us how Christianity is growing in other nations so greatly it's unreal. And yet, they've been sending missionaries to this nation for a long, long time. We need to wake up, folks. It's time that we stood up. Our forefathers were dedicated men for this nation. So I'm dedicated to my Lord and Savior. I know where He brought me from. I think we all need to sit down every now and then and remember where we came from. What we were like. I, I remember the day I got saved, I went to my dad's house because I was sick of who I was. I was sick of me, of my lifestyle and the way I was living and everything about me. I didn't know what I went. I, and I went to my dad's house and I wound up getting saved. And it's a bit, it, that was 31 years ago and the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But we need to wake up. We need to remember that. Remember where God brought us from. And remember... Do you remember when you first got saved, you wanted to tell everybody you knew about Jesus? How many people do you tell a day about Jesus? Today. It's not saved. It's easy to talk, us talk together. It's easy for us to get around. And, oh, Robbie, you and I sit down and talk about God all day long, can't we? But can you do that with a heathen out there under an interstate somewhere that don't know the Lord and has never met the Lord? That's the people we need to be going and looking for. We need to get smoke on our clothes, folks. If, you, if I come in here and you smell smoke on me, it ain't because I don't, not because I smoke, it's because I've been by somebody that does smoke and I'm trying to talk to them. Don't judge people by what you, your eyes tell you. Judge by what your spirit tells you. God's Word tells us we can tell each other spirit. We have kindred, kindred spirits together. Christians have kindred spirits. When you meet another Christian, you fall in love with them, don't you? As soon as you meet them, it's, it's something about that. There's, there's plenty of them out there that's not Christians that claim to be, but you can tell their spirit. But you still need to witness to them and talk to them. Do you pray for your leaders? 
or do we do like so many people do in this world, don't do it but talk about them, say bad things about them. Did you know you're disobeying the Bible when you do that? The Word says we're supposed to pray for our leaders, not talk bad about them. You ain't got, it don't say you've got to like them. It says you've got, you're supposed to pray for them. But do we pray for them or do we browbeat them and beat them down and just talk bad about them? My dad taught me something when I was a young man that I've shared over the years with people that said, don't judge anyone until you walk a mile in their shoes. You know what? That'll hush people up. That'll hush people up. It, it was on the news tonight that our sheriff and 30 some odd deputies are being investigated now for some bad stuff. Now I guarantee you, 80% of the people heard that judged him right then and said he's guilty. But you know what? They didn't say anything about that our sheriff has preached in many churches. My neighbor, he preached in his, in his church uh, a couple of years ago, said that, said that the man ought to be a preacher. That he was awesome. So we shouldn't judge him. shouldn't judge him or any of the deputies. We should wait and see what the law says. Let, let justice take its course. We judge people on what we hear about them. We shouldn't do that. Doubt. Doubt about yourself will stop you from witnessing to someone. Doubt that... I, I, I told a pastor something the other day that I thought about it, I said, and, and it, what I really said, it wasn't really what I meant. I told him I felt inadequate a lot of times. Well, I know I'm inadequate, but I know that the spirit within me is not. I know that I can stand before you and minister to you because I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to take over because this ain't nothing to me because I can't do nothing. When I was in high school, I would take an F other than get up and give a book report in front of the class. But I'm sorry now, I'll speak in front of the whole nation if need be. It don't matter with me because the Spirit of God within me, it gives me this power to do that. And that's from being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't have that until I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And praise the Lord, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I wasn't saved for three weeks. Because when I got, when I got saved, I'd been raised in church until I was about nine years old. And my dad and my mother had taught me how important it was of being saved and being filled with the Holy Ghost to give you power. Power. The power to boldly speak out. The power to, to believe and stand up and say, I belong to a nation that's not of this world. Let me tell you about it. I, I have enough confidence in the Holy Spirit that Debbie used to ask me not to pick up hitchhikers because I'd pick them up all the time. I wouldn't do it when she was with me. When I was by myself, I'd pick them up. She said, they're going to kill you. I said, they can't. They can't kill me unless God allows it. Scripture says that. I got a hedge around me. I got angels protecting me. And the devil can't hurt me unless God allows it. And if he allows it, it's for my good. And if something happens to me, I'm just going to heaven. I'm leaving this life for a better one. So what I told her, I said, no, they can't do that. What I'll do, uh, she said, they'll have a gun or a knife. I said, I'll talk about the gun or a knife. We'll go sell it and buy them a Bible. I believe that with all my heart. You, you have that much confidence in the Holy Spirit? If you do, you'll get out there and start telling people about Christ. We'll start inviting people to church. We'll start ministering. When we get saved, we're, we're called to be ministers of the gospel. If we weren't supposed to minister to other people and lead others to salvation, when we got saved, God just, we'd go to heaven. But no, he leads us on this earth so we can be a witness to others, to tell others what he's done in us. What is it? What is, think about you know, Think about when you first got saved. How excited was you? How on fire was you? Woo, it's the greatest thing. I don't know about you, but I ain't never, never had nothing to make feel me that good. Nothing. The greatest thing in the world. But what are we doing about it? We're not supposed to complain about things. We're supposed to be doing something about them. We're supposed to be doing something about it. Is, uh, I'm going to have to hurry on here. Is I want to go ahead and skip from Matthew to, to Romans 13 and 9. Is, uh, we're going to have to do it kind of quick tonight because it's a, it's a short night. And we're going to go do a little celebrating. Now, let me go here to Romans. There we go. What did I say? It was Romans 13, 9, and 10. Is, um, 
For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, thou, and if there be any other commandments, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. I want to read you something that David Mathis wrote. And I read this, I thought about it, I said, you know, this is perfect for tonight. It says, let us be profoundly grateful for the freedom we have in this country. To recruit for the true one and let us be unashamed to seize upon our fellow Americans' desire for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and to show them in whom such joy is truly found. You know, that, that tells me something. Tell me that man knew what he was talking about. Think about it. Are you happier now than you were before you were saved? I know I am. I tell people all the time that before I was saved, I was existing. I was just existing on this earth. And when I got saved, I've come alive. I've always pictured it as, as your heart, like a pie. And a big chunk of that pie was missing. And I believe that's the way every, Christ, every person that's born again, before they're born again is, that piece is missing out of that pie, and they're searching for it. We're walking around, we're searching for that piece that's missing in our heart to fulfill it so we can be a happy person. And when we get saved, that fulfilling fills that void in that pie, in that heart is whole. And we know what true love is. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But to me, when it says that pursuit of happiness, Pastor, it's telling me pursue salvation. What true happiness is. That's what true happiness is. And I'll tell you something, is there's no greater happiness than when you first get saved, but there's one that comes right below it. It's almost up to it. When you lead someone to salvation, that is awesome. Jeremy, if you could come up, is... Um, Jeremy's going to start playing. He's going he's to be ministering to us. But, but for, before he does, is, uh, you know, we need to, the word says to render to Caesar who, what is Caesar and render to God what is God's. Well, we need to render to our nation. We need to pay our taxes. We need to uh, obey the laws of the land. But we need to render to God what is God's. And God, what is God's is us. We belong to God. And if we belong to God, we should be obeying Him and obeying His Word. Now, you say, well, I, I, I fall out of the category because I don't know what the Word says, so I don't have to obey it. That's not true. I, our laws even say that ignorance is no excuse. So ignorance is no excuse to obeying God's Word. And if you don't know what the Word says, you need to get into it and read it and study it. Believe me, I, I, for, for 31 years, when I sit down and read my Bible, I have a, something I say. I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, come into me and help me to understand everything I read. And you know what? He does. He helps me to understand it. He helps me to realize what it is. Now, hey, I, I got probably 15 study Bibles. I imagine every minister to this. <laughs> And I, go, I, I like to go to all of them. But the Holy Spirit will teach us all things if we allow Him. But we have to put forth our best effort as well. But we need to render to God what is God's. We don't need to worry about the government. You know what? The Word even says those in authority over us are placed there by God. So when we talk bad about our, our sheriff, our governor, our president, our senators, we're saying God don't know what he's doing. So we need to change our views and just start praying for them. Praying for their salvation. Praying for them to receive wisdom and direction and guidance and knowledge. Use the wisdom, use the knowledge, put the wisdom to work. One way out the other is no good. I believe I've heard you say that before. 
no good. But we, we need to do that. If I could get you, if you would, I'd like everyone that would, would, would come forward here. And we need to pray for our nation, folks. What better time to pray for our nation than, than the night before the Declaration of Independence is signed? If you would come and join me. Go ahead, Jeremy. Oh. 
more time with your breath. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. You split the sea so I could walk around. 
time and I'm no longer a slave. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. fear is one of the things that holds us back when we're trying to serve the Lord. And I feel like when we're out there and we're in the marketplace and, and we're in front of people that we can minister, the devil will try to put fear in us to try to keep us from talking to these people, to, to try to keep fear in our hearts so that we go oh well maybe I shouldn't you know it's uncomfortable for me to talk to people you know um, you know I know this person I know how they're gonna react I know you know w what they're gonna say about me and, you know what they're gonna tell other people and all these things but I, I feel like when you just put all of that aside and you just allow God to enter your heart and, and be absolutely in control of what you are doing I, I just feel this right now with, with this song being on my mind that once you you know believe that you're no longer a slave to that fear that it doesn't control you that it does not dictate what you can and cannot do the power of God can just move in your life you can you can bring people to Jesus you can you can you know heal the sick and and you know bring people out of you know wheelchairs knock their crutches away you know all, all these crazy things that we hear about things that the Bible says that we can do if we would just get rid of that fear you know I, I, I love Pastor Jerry's uh, message today about being dedicated uh, about you know it, it kind of goes hand in hand with Pastor with what uh, Pastor John said uh, a little while ago about being fully committed you know being fully committed to being a, a servant of God but we just we just have to let go of that fear of you know what people are saying because people are going to reject us the bible tells us this that we're going to be you know persecuted and, and, and all that stuff we're gonna we're gonna face opposition that there's no question in that so the what if you know it's going to happen but you still got to do it anyways in faith we've got to go out in faith i i work with a bunch of guys you know they they have their lifestyle that they live and you know it it's not you know holy by any means but these are great guys and i and i kind of picture them you know what if they were in the kingdom of god you know th this passion that i see that they have about all these different things these political things that don't matter these these um interpersonal uh relationships that they have with some of the other co-workers that are not so great you know um what what if god was in their life how would that look and so you know i have challenged myself and really tried to get out of my own comfort zone and, and i'm saying this as a as a testimony to you guys because i believe god you know has really changed me in all this and i believe that he can change all of us in this and we can really have that that level of dedication to to really reach people for our nation the, the kingdom of heaven um you know that we would get out of our comfort zones um so i just i just want to sing this chorus one more time and and, and i'm going to turn it over to whoever wants it I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. Aren't you grateful for the message and the music tonight? 
thank the Lord for using his gifted servants and encouraging us tonight. So grateful for them. And uh, I'll echo some of what uh, Pastor Jerry and Brother Jeremy were saying. I, I heard the Spirit of God echoing in my spirit not many days ago, several times for a couple of mornings. Perfect love cast out fear. Please understand and receive the fact that God loves you perfectly and you receive the perfection of His love. You really don't have to walk in fear because we've been born again. And being born again, that means that God, when we were born again, did not give us the spirit of bondage to fear, but the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out to God, our Abba, Father. Let us pray tonight. Father, we are so grateful that, Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, we're so grateful tonight for the chapters and verses, Lord, for the scripture that Pastor Jerry showed, shared with us, and Lord, encouraged us to be more dedicated as saints of God, just as the founding fathers of this nation were. We pray even more so, help us as servants of God to become more profitable, become more dedicated to the kingdom's sake. Help us, Lord, to walk out. Lord, that knowledge that we have of Christ. And Lord, the things that we know of your word and the light that you've given us and shown us, help us to walk in that light. And we thank you that as we walk in that light, that the blood of Jesus Christ, your son, cleanses us from all sin. Father, now as we go forward into this time of uh, socializing and enjoying the fellowship of the Spirit and the fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we ask that you would bless the ice cream we're about to receive and help us just to use due diligence. And Lord, we thank you for this successful fundraiser as we pray and give you thanks tonight. And everyone said, amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.